Hi, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. Um, it's a pleasure for me to be here today and present at DevConf CZ. My name is Juarez Barbosa Jr. I work for Oracle as a senior principal uh, developer evangelist. And today I'm here to talk about uh, Kubernetes operators for databases. And of course, as an example of implementation, the Oracle database uh, operator. Uh, so without further ado, let's get started. Yeah, that's me, just a quick intro. Um, you know, if you scan this QR code, you can see my full profile and perhaps connect with me on social media if you are interested in discussing the topics that I am going to present uh, shortly today here. I have over 20 years of experience in several different IT companies um, with a focus primarily on Java, which is my primary um, language, programming language that I focus on, of course, and but also uh, several different um, cloud providers, um, of, uh, DevOps, something that I really, I'm really passionate about, cloud native, and a little bit of blockchain as well. But that's not a presentation about my profile, so let's get started. Okay, so, yeah, with cloud native computing, uh, you know, uh, we understand uh, what are the benefits of container orchestration and, you know, container-based development and, you know, what container uh, brings to the table in terms of a better uh, uh, approach to leverage the hardware resources and so on and simplification with the advent of microservices as well. Uh, and there are several di different things described here in this slide. You know, this is just a kind of level set <laughs> uh, slide just to, for the sakeness of fairness uh, to make sure that people who are starting their journey into cloud native understand it. But at the end of the day, you know, management of applications, microservices, uh, if you compare the de declarative approach to provisioning uh, resources and managing resources, you know, in comparison with a kind of uh, non-immutable non uh, approach to that, you know, and, or manual um, implementations and ways that you can uh, do things without automation, for example. Uh, the loop that we have in terms of observability, analysis, and then uh, possible action that happens, you know, as part of the uh, platform and the environment, <coughs> service discoverability, things like, you know, there are plenty of different uh, frameworks and libraries that you can use in different platforms, Istio, Keta, and so on, right? State maintenance, self-healing, you know, all the benefits. Um, and Kubernetes in terms of popularity, you know, it, it, it gained traction, but it is still ramping up, right? Um, so every day we are seeing more and more projects using uh, Kubernetes as the de facto container orchestration platform. So it is important for us to consider that in the scope of databases as well. Um, challenges in, in terms of um, the um, deployments, you know, uh, usually if you are working with a, a cloud provider, for example, it's important for you to use maybe some um, extensions that are available as part of that platform, but without I would say having an approach that would result in vendor lock-in and make sure that perhaps your provider is also sticking to the upstream open source component and you know the collaboration with the Cloud Native Computing Foundation under the Linux Foundation umbrella, open source and so on. There are several different alternatives in terms of platforms, you know, Red Rat, OpenShift, you know, Rancher, Docker Swarm, Azure Kubernetes Service, and, and the uh, one provided by Oracle as well, OK. Uh, container images, you know, just a snapshot, you know, not so updated one. Uh, and of course, it is not an exhaustive example, but you can see that in terms of components that, um, I don't know, maybe we can talk about, um, have a focus on storage, persistence, and so on. Uh, there are several different players here apart from Oracle. So definitely, if you are running a project, you know, microservices, and that is involving container orchestration, Kubernetes, and cloud native, and so on, possibly at some point, we will have to interact and maybe also uh, have that as part of your Kubernetes cluster. So that's a common concern indeed. Let's talk about Oracle's strategy to cloud native application development. Uh, you know, just a quick uh, overview to, uh, to give you a glimpse of what we have. 
the integration with the, our cloud platform, which is called OCR, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, Generation 2, by the way. Uh, many people don't know that, but Oracle used to have a cloud uh, called Oracle Cloud um, Infrastructure Classic. But um, years ago, Oracle actually decided to redesign everything from scratch with the best practices and learnings uh, from uh, different experiences and you know, exchanging uh, information in the scope of um, some initiatives like CNCF, for example. And this is the cloud that we have. We have pretty much you know, all the services you need to develop our applications, including cloud native uh, related applications. Uh, but just to perhaps uh, let you know that all the bits in terms of the platform, the example that I have here today, I included some slides uh, concerning the OpenShift platform as well, but we can do that with the Oracle Cloud uh, you know, alone. OCI container based on platform then, uh, moving now from the cloud uh, services you know, in terms of IaaS or perhaps PaaS, but more with a focus on the uh, services that are available there for you to imp implement container-based apps. We have uh, pretty much all the bits as well. Uh, and support uh, in terms of, for example, Java applications to the mainstream uh, frameworks and libraries, things like Spring Boot, GraalVM, you know. GraalVM, which is created and maintained somehow by Oracle Labs, which is our research institute, right? Um, we've just released a new um, version of it, quite interesting. We, we have something now called Oracle GraalVM, which is free, and with several different um, uh, things that you can do in terms of using um, native image, just uh, in the scope of cloud native apps as well, to not only to better leverage the hardware resources, but also to um, reduce the footprint of your application when you are using a container, uh, based image with uh, native um, compilation, for example, at the end of the day, you can reduce the surface attack area of your application because the unused uh, classes, they are removed. You know, there are several different ways that you can keep things that are important for your application and tools to support this migration in case you are using, for example, reflection and things like that. Uh, but this is something that you should have a look at. Same thing with Halidon, for example. We have now GraalVM uh, Cloud Native with some uh, specific uh, facilitators and, you know, and accelerators uh, for your application in case you decide to use Micronaut. Uh, and Halidon, you know, which is also a Cloud Native focus framework created and maintained by Oracle. And you can see again here, you know, in terms of security, observability, and application runtimes, and so on, Oracle has everything to support your uh, development. Uh, these are the uh, choices uh, in case you want to go with Docker and Docker Compose, Podman, you know, Kubernetes, or Rancher, you decide, or OpenShift, and so on. Um, and at the end of the day, you can use several different tools for things like infrastructure as code, uh, Ansible, but also you know Terraform, or if you want to give it instead of declarative approach to IAC, perhaps a more programmatic one, Pulumi. Uh, there are several different ways that you can use to provision cloud services nowadays, right? You can also access usually the central uh, hub, you know, or proxy that is available and provided by. The, these cloud providers like resource managers, and you can use SDKs for Java, Golang, Python. Um, <clears throat> but the, um, concerning the, these different options here and how you can collaborate and use these container um, runtimes and, and the platforms, I want to start to focus now on the DB operator. We have an operator uh, which is open source, by the way, uh, and also available in red on, on the, um, um, yes, no, I can talk about that later. Uh, but it is open source, uh, and one implementation that perhaps if you have another database or if you have an idea for containerizing uh, different data stores and databases, you can use also as a blueprint. Because, as I said, uh, the code is there for you. You can just check the implementation, perhaps improve it. You can also collaborate with us and PRs and so on. Okay, uh, our database, uh, the um, app and the simple mission here, you know, uh, with this focus on container-based, as I explained, you know, it is really important for us to, to consider, you know, uh, the use of uh, such databases in the scope of cloud-native and Kubernetes. 
Um, and these uh, database operator, at the end of the day, uh, you can do things with Helm charts, for example, right? But it is not so natural or so straightforward when you are talking about uh, uh, stateful uh, workloads, for example, okay? So uh, usually an operator and the way that we provisioned it, uh, you can, for example, attach to an existing cloud uh, provisioned um, article autonomous database, for example, and then use Kubernetes to um, pretty much uh, um, perform all the uh, most important operations with that database, and that's primarily what the R operator does. In terms of uh, the uh, cloud uh, and the database versions, you know, Oracle, we have um, single instance, you know, as I said, the autonomous database, sharded DB, you know, real application clusters. If you are um, perhaps aware of that or if you've participated in a project uh, that involved Oracle database, I'm sure you can understand uh, easily what I'm talking about, but otherwise, uh, uh, my uh, deck has all the proper uh, resources uh, and possibly uh, the event organizers will make that available for you. Full support to Kubernetes um, in terms of the database, as I said, right? Uh, we have, um, you know, for example, the Oracle Container Registry as well uh, from, uh, as part of this cloud uh, platform uh, where you can host your images, custom images, or you can leverage the existing ones, right? And combine that with other uh, different uh, components that we have. Uh, just as a couple of examples here, we have MicroTX, which is a kind of uh, framework for microservices you know, where you can easily compose and use and, uh, you know, uh, distributed transactions, saga, pattern, and all those things, okay? And there is now a new uh, offering as part of our mar marketplace as well called the Spring Boot Backend. So it is not only about having the database uh, uh, clusterized and also as a Kubernetes, uh, as part of a Kubernetes deployment, but uh, you can also use uh, other different accelerators, okay? Let's now um, deep dive into the Aura operator or the Oracle database operator for Kubernetes, okay? Again, this is just level set. I remember, uh, you know, just a, a refresh of uh, the main Kubernetes-related components, and we have the so-called operators, right, as part of this architecture. And um, this is the basic blueprint concerning how you can uh, somehow customize and create your custom operator, you know, and the approach that we've taken when implementing this operator. Uh, no tricks here, just the usual uh, blueprint, right? But this is just for illustrational purposes indeed. The thing is that, again, as I said, you know, uh, the challenge uh, if you don't use an operator for a database, for example, is managing uh, the state and the complexity involved in this implementation, you know? So it is good when you have uh, for example, Oracle as the creator and, and the maintainer of Oracle database and all the different open source libraries and SDKs and everything around that, providing also the Kubernetes operator for you. Okay, so you can avoid headaches, you can just focus on what you have to do and that's it. Uh, the Kubernetes operator for database on, you know, at the end of the day, stateful applications, you know, uh, these things, as I said, you know, replica um, sets and unique states, you know, and also the life cycle of your database. Um, the examples and the scripts that I have here, for example, if you want to apply a patch, for example, for your Oracle database, you have to make sure that the database is in a given state. It has to be available, for example. So. It is uh, some, some, somehow uh, a frequent you know, and common mistake to think that, okay, no, I can do that quickly, but when you start to implement an operator for uh, a situation like this one, where you have to work with databases, for example, more and more requirements will appear, you know, so it is not a matter of overlooking it. It's, just a matter of, you know, when you start to explore and really, uh, in practical terms, implement this stuff, uh, there are many real challenges here, and that's what this slide is about uh, somehow, you know. Also, here is uh, just a high-level overview of this uh, architecture, you know. 
We can use the common tools, kubectl, of course, and we have the DB operator as part of a uh, Kubernetes cluster, and then the different databases that you can orchestrate and also uh, use. You know, containerized Oracle DBs, or what we call the base DB, you know, a, a, a simple database instance. The autonomous database, when we call autonomous, perhaps you don't know all the Oracle Autonomous DB. You know there are two flavors of that, the Autonomous Transaction Processing or the OLTP database, and the DW version of it for data warehousing. But it is autonomous because some tasks behind the scenes, you know, they are, there are some AI-based um, um, agents running uh, for you uh, to do things that usually a DBA has to do like um, patching, you know, security included, okay? Because if you go open source, that's easy, but there's a cost, right? If you uh, overlook maybe applying a patch, that's what the crackers will explore in your architecture. Because open source is free, but it is not easy to manage, you know, the governance of open source is something that you have to take into consideration. And that's why we have companies selling what we call professional open source services, right? Things like training, consulting, support, and so on. They give you the open source component, but usually the component is not optimized, so you have to go and work with them to maybe have a better implementation. And that's uh, we you can get out of the box with the autonomous database, you know. Patching, um, performance stunning as well, indexes are created for you. So the AI-based um, um, agents, they are running continuously behind the scenes uh, to uh, take care of your database instance and the deployments. And the last one here, we have on-prem DBs as well, so depending on the scenario, you can also use the Kubernetes operator for that. Oh, I forgot to mention the lifecycle operations. Um, at the end of the day, that's the main, uh, and the ultimate goal of this operator and the benefits, you know, you can just provision the database, you can bind to an existing one, as I said, that you provision it regardless of uh, which tools you used, IAC or the SDK, as I said, or the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Portal, well, you decide. And you can stop, start, terminate the database, perform backups, restore, patch, upgrade, also scale, and um, do a little bit of the security related tasks as well because Oracle has what we call the, or the wallet which is, in, uh, that implements uh, MTLS, mutual TLS, you know, so it's another layer of, of security that can be managed with the Kubernetes uh, operator as well. The examples that we have here, you can see uh, at the bottom, you know, kubectl apply dash f Oracle database operator, so everything you know, no tricks here, as I said, no, we are not introducing new tools or extensions or you just use the plain and the usual ones and that's it. Okay, why uh, the Kubernetes operator for database, right? Um, as I said, um, we want to be as comprehensive as possible and uh, work and collaborate with uh, all the different tools and, and the possibly the cloud providers that we can, not only the Oracle Cloud, right? That's why the operator is open source. Uh, if you decide, you can also extend it. Uh, we want to make that, uh, you know, you can go and provision the Oracle database. Uh, I have an example here where I provisioned the autonomous database with uh, Terraform and IAC, but then I can use the operator just to bind to it and then use it from uh, kubectl and so on. Um, of course, again, address, address the pain point of using um, stateful Kubernetes applications and you know, all the problems that might uh, arise from uh, that, you know, that perhaps you are overlooking. And extend that, uh, you know, uh, to other uh, environments, you know, not only the cloud-focused ones, but also as an approach to hybrid cloud, you know, on-prem uh, on systems and data centers and the public cloud as well, or multi-cloud, you know, because some people, they somehow are confused at that, you uh, Frequently, they think that hybrid cloud and multi-cloud is the same thing, but it is not, you know. Even the literature, if you check, but we have all the bits uh, to support uh, all these scenarios here. Why you should care, you know. Uh, of course, I don't have to overemphasize that here, because at the end of the day, the, that's what this event is about, you know, discuss all the nice things concerning 
uh, you know, platform engineering, DevOps, cloud native, and programming, and so on. Okay, so DevOps, GitOps, CI, CD pipelines, you know, that's the world we are living in at the moment. Automation, of course, we do need that, right? There's no way to uh, reach uh, and have the proper scale uh, without uh, looking at these things. Uh, those are not only uh, things that you can include in your list of requirements as nice to have uh, once, you know, but you have to work with them. Okay, uh, the developer preview, uh, just a glimpse of the features here that you can explore later in the different databases as well, okay? Uh, and depending on the flavor that uh, you want to work with, there are some uh, operations and features that you can leverage. Uh, the production version, you know, which is about to be released soon, okay? Uh, we have a team working on that and a couple of uh, PMs uh, dedicated uh, to this effort. And the roadmap, um, I just want to perhaps highlight here DB23C, which is our upcoming release for uh, the enterprise database. But we have on, at the moment what we call uh, 23C um, free developer release, a free database that you can download and install. And it is uh, the same uh, Oracle database, our DBMS, same engine, same features and everything. You can run that, um, you know, for your own side projects or maybe for learning and so on. Um, it is there for you. I have a, a slide uh, about this one here in case you want to have a look later. Yeah, talking about uh, the uh, OpenShift platform then, uh, Oracle collaborated with a partner to also expose that as part of the uh, Red Rat uh, ecosystem uh, catalog. Okay, so all the features are there for you as well in case you want to uh, go on, uh, another, uh, to another level and really abstract the complexity of that. You know, that's a possible path. Uh, you just uh, look for it, or an uh, operator, uh, you'll find it, okay? Uh, just some screenshots here, uh, how you can install, and you know, all the details. Uh, but of course, you can do it with the Oracle Cloud as well. Why? Because we have this database operator add-on as a tile, you know, included in our um, cloud portal and console, all right? Yeah. Um, the demo steps here, you know, uh, just for example, concerning the life cycle and, and as I said, the, the uh, main benefits of using that, you know, uh, the typical uh, scenarios or use cases, uh, if we can call them use cases, okay. Uh, uh, binding to an existing database, that's uh, the one that I have here, but my uh, slide, my deck actually, I have some backup slides uh, including all the, um, remaining scenarios, you know, DevOps, it is sometimes, uh, uh, it is difficult to f for you to pack and, and, and talk about everything in a, uh, in a talk. <laughs> uh, but provisioning ADB as well, scaling a database up, stopping terminating a database and so on. Uh, so just to give you uh, a glimpse, you log into the console and you click autonomous transaction processing, that's the autonomous database ATP, okay? You just select the database then. You copy what we call OCID. Uh, this is a kind of um, unique identifier for the cloud um, uh, related services uh, that belong uh, to the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure uh, environment, okay? With that, um, you just prepare your YM file. You just provide your OCID for the target database and then you can just apply, you know, kubectl apply dash f and the specific YM file with the configuration. And that's it, it will be bound. So you can now um, move forward and use uh, the other remaining scripts uh, to work with this database, okay? It is as easy as that, uh, no catches here. Same thing, scaling up, okay, uh, same steps here. You just uh, uh, increase the uh, OCPU count. The example here, we are to, uh, going from one to two. Apply again, then you can scale it. Uh, there is a way to query for it, to check and make sure that uh, it is available. Um, some examples here, I'm using environment variables, but of course you can use, depending on the, 
if we are talking about credentials and so on, just use uh, the, your um, um, vote of, of, of choice, you know, and you are good to go. Stopping a database, same, th same thing, okay. Um, you can just, um, depending on the current state, uh, you can just modify it. And if you have to check if it is available, terminate it, and so on. And in order to really terminate it, there is a specific uh, uh, configuration uh, property that you can use, hard link, and that's it. Terminate means I don't need this database instance anymore, okay, so I want to terminate it, remove the underlying resources, and and it will be gone. Uh, in terms of ob observability, you know, the exporters here, uh, matrix exporter and log exporter, you know, uh, so you can elaborate Prometheus and Grafana as well to get some um, uh, metrics and also observe your database as usual, right? That's a common requirement as well. And depending on the specific database version that you are using, there's something called Enterprise Manager Database Express as well, and you can use that console. It is basic observability, but um, you know the charts are there for you, and you can just uh, observe them live. Uh, yeah, before I conclude now, let me just uh, shift gears here and show you. Yeah, this is the database that I have, uh, you know, uh, on Oracle Cloud, an autonomous database. You can see the status that I talked about here. You know, when you access the DB instance, uh, you just have to copy OCID here, okay? For example, I can just have it here. This is a typical OCID, as I said, you know, that uh, is a kind of unique identifier. That's the only thing you need to work with the, the uh, operator then, okay? So, the bind uh, operation, or action, as you can call it, okay? You just include the OCID here, and you are good to go. kubectl apply dash f and this file here, okay? Autonomous database underscore bind, and that's it. Same thing for the other operations then. You can see then here, backup, delete resource, rename a database, restore scale, uh, one of the examples with a CPU count that I talked about. Stop, start, and terminate the database. Update admin password. MTLS, that's related to mutual TLS, as I talked about when I started my talk, uh, in the wallet uh, that you can use. Upload net a network access, you know, in terms of whitelisting and creating some ACLs, access control lists and the specific wallet that I'm talking about. I happen to have a wallet here, you know, because I'm talking about wallet, but uh, what is this wallet? The wallet, when you create a database instance, uh, you go to database connection here. You have two choices. You can download this wallet, or you can use the connection strings in case you decide not to use MTLS, mutual TLS, with the wallet, which is better. Uh, but use just the usual credentials, uh, username, password, and a connection URL to the database. When you download this wallet, for example, I have one here. It is a zip file, you unzip it. You can see the usual Oracle configuration files here. Also a Java key store, some certificates, and so on. Okay? Um, yeah. And in order to provision the database as well, uh, this, uh, talking about uh, automation, with, with Kubernetes first. Yeah, let, let's just finish this one here. Uh, these are, at the end of the day, uh, actions, you know, or things that you have to do with your database instance. You can maybe use a uh, DevOps platform for that. You decide about which one, okay? OCI DevOps or Azure DevOps or maybe GitHub Actions, which I love. Uh, you know, because the action is what you want to do. I want to maybe bind or stop or start the database and so on. Uh, actions are comments. If you like design patterns, for example, we can go for patterns, so the comment pattern. So you can just go and create simple actions to and run them as you need, okay? Same thing uh, to provision the database then. Uh, you can use the portal, of course, but my example here I can do that from um, Terraform. So 
I just created a Terraform file here with some variables. Basically, the compartment OCID. The compartment is uh, a specific container, let's put it that way, that you can uh, use to aggregate your cloud uh, services. If you do that, uh, or you are used to other cloud providers like, I don't know, maybe Azure. Uh, this is the same as, as, as uh, Azure Resource Group, okay? And then you provide the database name here, your desired password. Uh, usually you receive a notification when the database instance is, is completed. Outputs, you, uh, the connection string configuration and the specification for the database. I, I decided about OLTP, uh, the autonomous transaction processing. That's what I have. And as I said, I can run that from uh, for example, as a, uh, a GitHub action, if I want, okay, I can just go and provision the database, uh, and I can combine that as I want uh, regarding any uh, DevOps uh, solution. Um, last thing, um, if you want to explore that, Oracle uh, GitHub, uh, our uh, Oracle's um, handle on GitHub, Oracle Database Operator, okay, the scenario that I explained, it is here for you. You know, plenty of samples for all the different databases. Uh, the link to the Oracle database operator uh, on Red Rat's ecosystem catalog. And just to finalize, also my deck has all the references, including the links. And talking about uh, the Oracle Ace program, this is a program that Oracle has for distinguished community members. So you, if you are doing things related to Java, open source, or the Oracle database, uh, feel free to perhaps approach me on social media and we can collaborate, I can nominate you. There are several benefits. Live Labs, we have some free workshops available for you. Everything is there, Python, Golang, Java, database, cloud, you know. Oracle is running a campaign at the moment uh, concerning uh, free training and free vouchers for the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Certification. The 23C database that I talked about, uh, the free developer release, uh, please make sure to have a look at that um, because you can test everything that you get from the autonomous database uh, running as a cloud uh, instance, for example, with this local one, okay? If you want, uh, or the Oracle Cloud also has uh, what we call always free services, so just go there and create an account. Thank you very much, and then I can take some questions now uh, if we have any. Yeah. You mentioned the operator for the Terraform map. Uh, yes, I mean, how does it do it? Um, actually, this is something that uh, we are. Okay, yes. Uh, you're asking about the support for on prem uh, databases, right? Yeah. Um, there's a way to actually, uh, you know, work with, uh, depending on what you are using for the on-prem environment, uh, to, or if you are going, what we can call the do-it-yourself approach to Kubernetes, right, with the open source components and so on. Uh, if that's part of your cluster, you know, there are ways that the operator can target that as well, but this is a feature that it is not released yet as part of the developer preview, because I talked about the production, release, uh, so I don't have all the details about it, but if you want, I can connect you with the uh, product managers who are responsible for this feature, okay? We can talk about that offline. Any other questions? No? Okay, once again, uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to introduce you to the Oracle operator for Kubernetes. Um, just to create awareness about it, and hopefully you will uh, have a look at it and perhaps provide us uh, meaningful feedback as well. Thanks again.